two of jury selection this morning in the Daryl Brooks trial. This after several outbursts and disruptions in court yesterday. Brooks is representing himself in the deadly holiday parade tragedy in Wisconsin. The judge had to take several breaks during day one of jury selection because Brooks kept, as predicted, interrupting her. She ended up putting him in another courtroom to watch the proceedings. Judge Jennifer Doro warned Brooks that if it continues, uh, that she could appoint an attorney to represent him in the case. Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter is in Wisconsin and has more on what happened in court yesterday and a look at the overall case against Daryl Brooks. Ted, it was here in downtown Waukesha less than a year ago where a holiday tradition turned to tragedy. The man accused of the carnage, Darrell Brooks, now representing himself in court, spent most of the first day of jury selection removed from the courtroom for his outburst and disruptions. Nevertheless, the court was able to make some progress towards the needed jury of 12 with four alternates. It was November 21st, 2021. Thousands of people were gathered in downtown Waukesha, Wisconsin for the annual Christmas parade. But an afternoon of holiday cheer turned into a tragic nightmare. Police say this man deliberately drove his SUV into the parade. It increases its speed and it begins to do a zigzagging motion through the crowd, hitting people running people over and it appears that the vehicles intentionally aiming for people. The alleged driver Darrell Brooks drove through the parade route for five blocks driving up to 25 miles per hour while plowing into parade goers and participants. Detective Thomas Casey was working that day and testified about what he saw at a pre-trial hearing. I first stepped in front of the SUV um, put my hands up and was yelling for the vehicle to stop. Okay. Did the vehicle stop? It did not. It first hits drum player and continues and I would say it hits approximately 10 people and runs directly over the top of them and then turns to the right and starts hitting other people in the parade route. Dozens of people were hit. Six people died from multiple blunt force injuries, including an eight-year-old boy and 61 others were injured. Faith in you. These families are going through a really hard time. Everybody that was here just went through such trauma. According to the criminal complaint, the driver slowed down only to then accelerate, taking an abrupt left turn directly into a crowd. This, investigators say, showed an intentional act to strike and hurt as many people as possible. The driver didn't stop until a police officer shot at him. One of our officers saw the vehicle coming at him and forced that officer to discharge his service weapon. He fired at Mr. Brooks' vehicle? Yes, he did. Did he strike the vehicle? Three times. Did the vehicle stop? Did not. Brooks eventually drove into a nearby neighborhood, crashed his car, and then took off on foot. He stopped at this house where a ring camera captured the moment police caught up with him. Brooks was arrested and charged with dozens of criminal acts, including six counts of first degree intentional homicide. Interrogation records from that night show Brooks told police that he, quote, didn't mean to kill anyone. Brooks pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, but withdrew that plea in September. Have you had the opportunity to thoroughly discuss your decision to withdraw your special plea with your attorneys? Yeah. Have they discussed the advantages and disadvantages of withdrawing that plea with you? Yeah, I, I have my own reasons why. Just a week before trial, yet another twist in the case. Brooks decided he would represent himself, prompting his defense attorneys to withdraw. At a hearing, the judge ruled Brooks competent and not to represent himself, but his actions in court are raising questions. I object to that. Responses to questions to asked. I object to that, that because his, at the end of I the day, I understand, Mr. Brooks. I object, stop. You can I object. object. Your objection is noted. I'm going on. I, this is one I of object. the expectations that I have: is you can object. It will be noted, but you can't keep interrupting. You're, you're your objection, sir, your objection is noted. You're reading from noted. something that I haven't been privileged this to read myself. This is a prime example of some of the difficulty 
uh, with Mr. Brooks. I don't think you have a PhD, um, Your Honor. He can be, dis in my opinion, dis deliberately disruptive, but nonetheless, he maintains being competent at the most basic level in order to present a defense on his uh, behalf. Get to that. Brooks' mother pleaded with the court not to allow him to represent himself. She says she won't be at the trial and expects her son will be out of control. And I hate to say this, you're going to see manic, full blown. That's what you're going to see. And Ted, while everything does seem to be back to normal here on East Main Street, there are reminders of the tragedy. The storefronts adorn signs that say United for Waukesha, Waukesha Strong, that motto that this community really rallied around after the tragedy. And those same community members, those who live in this county, showing up again today for day two of jury selection. As far as Brooks goes, the judge did tell him late yesterday he earned the right to return back inside the courtroom in person in front of those members of the prospective jury pool if he can behave. Cornell, send it back to you, Ted. All right, our thanks to Chanley Painter. We'll see uh, how long um, he goes today with, before being thrown out, or maybe he lasts the entire day. Let's talk about it with criminal defense attorney Maria Barlow in Chicago and forensic psychiatrist and body language expert Dr. Carol Lieberman in Los Angeles. Um, this is seemingly going to be a disaster. Um, the, the, the idea that he's going to represent himself, he can't, you know, day one of jury selection, Dr. Lieberman, it, when you look at D Darrell Bro Brooks, um, there's a level of mental illness there. I mean, come on, I'm a, right? There's something going on, and, and, and he's got the attitude of, um, I don't care, and I'm going to disrupt this. Watch me do it. What, what are your thoughts? takeaways when you look at his behaviors? Yes, it's a combination of uh, mental illness and a, a lack of, of course, sophistication in knowing how to be a lawyer. A anybody who represents themselves, you know, uh, it's, it's it usually ends up in a, in a loss. Um, they lose the case. And um, I don't know how, you know, it, it boggles my mind how someone could have found him competent to stand trial, clearly he's not. And he has this sort of idea that, well, if I just keep interrupting, you know, I don't like what's going on. And so if I just keep interrupting and stopping this and saying, you know, that, that then I won't be found guilty or then, you know, or at least I'll get all this attention for the whole trial or, or a combination of all of these things. But I don't see how it's possibly gonna work like this with him uh, representing himself. And I think they need another psychiatrist to, uh, to evaluate him. Jennifer Doro, the judge, uh, Maria, is in, in a difficult position here. Uh, he does have a constitutional right to represent himself, but being competent to stand trial and being competent to represent yourself are two different things. Where do you see this going? I mean, she, ref she sort of referenced um, yesterday the uh, scenario of, hey, if you don't get it together, I'm going to assign an attorney to represent you. Do, you. do you think at the end of the day that's what's going to happen here? Absolutely. If he can't make it through jury selection, which is very important, but the lightest part of a trial, um, he's not going to make it through a trial. He's not going to make it through witness testimony. He's not going to behave. Uh, if he can't, I mean, jury selection is probably the quietest part of a trial. I just don't see him even making it through an opening statement. So she's either going to put him back out of her courtroom or she's going to assign him counsel. And it'll probably end up being both because I don't see him behaving just because he has counsel. That attorney is not going to be able to control him. He's uncontrollable, but maybe they might convince him to uh, put his insanity plea back in because clearly he's had some issue. Yeah, <clears throat> we'll see. Um, today we'll get a good idea of, of where this is going if he continues down the same path. Yesterday there was an exchange. And, and cameras, you see still cameras are allowed here during jury selection, but not video. So we don't have the video, but we do have an exchange between Judge Doro and Brooks. After Brooks kept inter uh, uh, interrupting the judge, she said at one point, Mr. Brooks, stop. You're going to have to, we're going to have a really long day if you keep doing this. Brooks then argued he hasn't had time to prepare his defense since his uh, lawyers were fired uh, saying, the equivalent of going into a gunfight with a butter knife, Your Honor. 
as he um, was asking, I guess, for a delay. And then in another exchange, Judge Duro asked Brooks if he had any questions for the group of jurors, to which Brooks replied, I just want to strike everybody, strike them all. Again, today uh, will be day two of this jury selection process. And um, uh, uh, Carol, that, this is probably not going to make it through day two, right? I mean, after what we saw, not only day one, but also uh, in, in the pretrial appearances that he made with his attorney there, he was disruptive. I mean, he's an angry man from the get-go. When he his his whole crime, and he had other crimes before that, domestic violence and various other crimes. Um, so he's an angry man, and part this is another way for him to be able to express his anger. You know, the the main thing was driving his car down the parade route, and now is he's just continuing. He's angry at society. There are a lot of political things that he's angry about, and this is just his continuing. Um, you know, to strike out at society and certainly to to not get punished for for what he believes and what he wants to do. And and, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I think his mother coming in and asking that he not be allowed to represent himself. I think that that was that was very interesting. And, and um, you know, she does. She realizes his deficiencies that he's not going to be able to do this. Yeah, absolutely. She um, warned the judge in a handwritten letter. Uh, and, and urged the judge not to allow him to do this because of exactly what we're seeing uh, play out here. Our, our Chanley Painter is going to be, she'll be there today monitoring it. Again, no cameras allowed um, except for still photography during the jury selection process, but our team, along with Chanley, will update us throughout the day as that process begins. Want to thank Carol Lieberman for her time and expertise this morning. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Lieberman, for getting up so early for us. Appreciate it. 